But anyway, we're going to talk about sales today. So I'm going to give you 10 tips. And some include some of the basic things that we talk about in sales, you know, like closing and objections and benefits and all that good stuff. But I want to put a little strategy behind it. Now, the first thing I want you to do is because what we want to do is to make this sales process not look like we're trying to sell people because people are going to turn off the minute they feel like they're being sold. It's just human nature. So what you have to do is to make this process and not just to make it that or make it seem that way. It should be that, in fact, a servicing operation. You are providing a service. So when somebody asks me, are you selling me? No, I'm not selling you something. I'm providing a needed service. Well, how do I know it's a needed service? Because number one rule is you want to make them or encourage them to initiate the contact. There you go, folks. Now that's how this, this ball gets to rolling in the right direction. If you can get them to initiate the contact, man, you have been given a carte blanche. You can bug them the rest of your life. Hey, you called me. <laughs> That's exactly right. You want them to contact you first. And that just changes the That's a game changer. If you've seen that going through the phone book and hitting people up in the elevator and chasing people down the street, it's going to be a much longer road to hope. But if they contact you, man, I'm tell you, it just it opens up the universe. Now, how do you do that? By effective marketing and advertising. So the, 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 the reality is that the sales starts before the sales process, like anything else in marketing. It does not exist in a vacuum. You have to be constantly putting out your features and your benefits of your products and your sales. You have to engage in good marketing, effective advertising, making sure you're on the right platforms, making sure you're using the right code words and emotional hot buttons, all that good stuff, and let people contact you. Now, that's not going to always be the case, but I'm telling you, that's the best place to start. Now, another thing you want to do in this strategy, you got to lower the threshold to make it easier for people to interact with you. In other words, don't say, look, hey, you got to come down to my office, or I got to come, let's see, you, or I got to thump through all these hoops. Man, let's make it easy. Let's tell people, look, you can Zoom. I had somebody call me yesterday. I think this lady was in Baltimore or something. She's trying to decide when she's in the D.C. area. And when I'm up there, I said, look, hey, man, we don't have to do this. We can, Let's do Zoom. How about that? I blame it on the COVID. <laughs> man, I got that appointment. We're talking on Monday. Uh, so lower the threshold. Don't make people jump through all these hoops. I just, you know, I know you got a nice office. You want people to come see it. Are you tired of being locked down? You want to have that interaction, but let's make it easy. You can be Zoom. You can do a telephone call, but let's lower the threshold to get that initial interaction. Now, this is something I want you to do. I'm going to put this up here early because I'm going to talk about it more in depth at the end. But start using trial closing the minute you interact with that person. Now, what's the difference between a trial close and a close? Well, it's the same thing. You're trying to get the sale, but you don't want to jump out the gate saying, hey, look, ready to start? Let's go. <laughs> you don't want to do that ever. Well, a trial close is kind of like testing the water in case that person is ready to go right now. And some of them are. But you don't usually know that if you don't do the trial close. So the trial close might be something like, how soon you want to get that? How, how soon you want that website? That's a trial close, whether you know it or not. You're just curious. But because they might say, look, hey, I need this. I need like yesterday. Man, you can forget all this other stuff. <laughs> you go straight for the juggler from there. You get out your order form and start writing. <laughs> That's why you do trial closes. And you can do it at any point in this process. You don't have to wait to the end, which is a mistake. Many people think they follow these sales books, right? benefit selling, count objections, and then close. No, do those trial balloons. Every time you interact with that person, find some way to ask for that sale. Now, something else I want you to do. You've got to paint that picture. Now, what do I mean? I don't mean become Picasso or Pablo or some artist. <laughs> Have you done the over, overdue recognition art gallery in, uh, over there in uh, Bowie? Great people up there, by the way. But when I say paint the picture, you've got to put make that customer see themselves 
riding in that new car. It's like, man, it's really gonna be nice. That he had that new AC, hot as it is outside. That's called painting the picture. It's like, man, I know you're gonna be tired of folks asking you where's your website, right? Yeah, they like, damn, you know, you're right. We call that painting the picture. You are you putting them into the driver's seat before they actually have the key. <laughs> they start seeing themselves. That is so effective. So you want to do that. You want to inject that in the process as well. Now, if you have to send somebody some information, which may happen sometimes, like if you've done your trial balloon and they haven't read it, not ready to sign up, you want to make sure that information has some information that has some that package you send them is moving that process along. You want to add some things like some testimonials, generate that social proof, talk about how other folks are doing it and how they're going to be out there all by themselves if you're, if you're not doing it. And um, and then also you want to get and start looking for those objections as they pop up. Now, the thing about objections, I know, like I said, people have in their sales field, sometimes they do this stuff by the book. They got this hierarchy of things. But I, I take a different approach to objections. I say, why wait for them? <laughs> well, we know what the objections are going to be. You know, I, I mean, you've been doing, if you've been selling this product for 100 years, 20 years, 10 years, you know exactly what the objections are. Why wait? And another reason you don't want to wait because many of the objections are what we call hidden objections. They're not going to tell you. They're not going to say, look, hey, that costs too much. They're going to say, hey, let me go home and talk to my wife. Oh, well, uh, let me think about it. They're going to give you everything except the real, except the real objection. So instead of waiting, I like to take the proactive approach. Let's get the objections out of the way from the get go. I was start talking about price. Well, look now, now we just had a, uh, we just, matter of fact, we just had a price uh, increase last week, but I think we're not going to, I think I can get you in at this original price. Two things happen. We, we addressed an objection and we did a trial close. Right there in this one sentence. These are strategic things, ladies and gentlemen, that it doesn't look like you're selling somebody. So let's get these objections out of the way. Like I say, once again, let's get those testimonies in the front of them too. Somehow you got to get that person to see that you have been doing this for a minute. Social proof should be included in practically every aspect of sales and advertising. And that simply means that others are doing it and you that person should be doing it too and with you <laughs> you go to my website it's just one big page of testimonials and because i understand the power of social proof so you want to inject that into your sales process every chance you get you could be on the phone matter of fact that person on the phone and your phone could ring your cell phone could ring it's oh yeah that was that client working on their website i just want to let's make sure i got there they want to they want to start next week i just want to make sure that uh so hold on a second you just dropped in some social proof. That's strategy, ladies and gentlemen. And it's honest. And it's not giving you that salesy, hungry look. <laughs> but it's very effective. Very effective. Now, what you want to do also, you want to do what we call risk aversion. Make it less risky to do business with you. I mean, sometimes you dealing with folks never heard you. They wouldn't know you from Jack. <laughs> hey, what this gateway guy? Talk about you going to build my brand and get me some customers and my, write my marketing strategy. Well, I'm going to try to do everything I can to make it sound a little less risky to do business with me. So on my website, I'm going to put things like my cage code. That means Uncle Sam at least done check me out. <laughs> you can't get a cage code if you're, you got to have some, you got to have at least a Don's number and a, a business license or something. So you, you do things that reduce the risk of doing business with you if you've been if you're a member of the better business administration put that banner out there anything that you can do to help people feel comfortable and feeling like it's less risky doing business with you than the next person these are all sales techniques folks that are very very effective and it's very strategic now the last not the last thing because this process never ends to be honest with you but one of the things that we talked about is, is the close that's asking for the sale. You have not sold until you get the sale. And you have to ask for it. Now, unfortunately, many people who, who don't understand sales, they actually ask. <laughs> they get the door slammed in their face. 
you don't really even go up there and have, hey, can I have this sale? No, that's not how you do it. I'm going to tell you my favorite one, and it's so effective. I'm going to let you into one of my secret sauces of Gatewood success. We call it the forced close. Give them two choices. Either one of them is acceptable to you. Man, let me tell you, the minute you master this, you're going to see some changes, and you're going to start seeing some pay dirt happening. <laughs> that's right. Do you want me to deliver this, or are you going to come pick it up? Are you going to use your cash app today or your PayPal? Can we do? Can we set this appointment for Wednesday at 3 or Monday at 2? Do you want the automatic transmission or the manual? That's called a forced close. I'm going to tell you what it, why, why it's so effective. It also goes back to that painting, that picture. That person says, look. I can't do an automatic. Last time I tried that, I ran over my neighbor's cat. <laughs> I can see myself in that automatic. All I got to do is turn the engine and go. <laughs> you say something like Cash App or Venmo, they'll send it themselves. Oh, yeah, I have Cash App. And they're just eager to use it. I went to play golf the other day. And uh, I told got to the car. I'm about to try to buy my credit card out. I like, look, we don't take credit card. We take Cash App. I'm like, hey, okay. I mean, I hadn't even really, I hadn't even decided whether I was going to buy those basket of balls. I was still in the deciding process because I never played that before. But when she said catch out, I was, hey, I reached in my pocket, put up my little green, did the catch out thing, and I was good to go. I didn't realize I, after I got my little bucket of balls, I man, she did pull a, a force close on me. I'm out there hitting golf balls. <laughs> this stuff works, ladies and gentlemen. And the last but not least, we have to do follow up. Follow up is pivotal. Pop, follow up is pivotal. And good morning, uh, Brother Bradley. You've got to do the follow up. I'm going to tell you why follow up is so important. First of all, buyer's remorse. <laughs> buyer's remorse is real. It's real, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, usually in most states, you got you have 72 hours to change your mind. <laughs> and so you, you better do everything you can within that 72 hour window to make sure that person doesn't, doesn't go home and, and change their mind. And not because you did anything, you didn't pull a fast one on them. But people just, human nature is that way. They get home and they start thinking about it. And say, well, you know what? I probably could have waited a little while. And But the way to alleviate that or to abate it is to do that follow-up. I mean, every day <laughs> within that 72 hour window, I'd be sending them something. So, hey, look, we got your onboarding form. Thank you. All right, I'm going to send you a worksheet tomorrow. I want you to fill that out and send it back to me. I'm just checking on you to make sure that sheet is filled out correctly. We're going to fight that buyer's remorse. And I would say once you get that sale, and when you, now if you like in a, a situation where you're doing like some type of professional services like a legal or accounting, marketing, stay in touch with that person every a couple of times a week until that project is completed. Just touch in, touch base, because silence is not golden when it comes to sales and service. So anyway, folks, that's the, that's my sermon for the day. Sales is strategic. It's not about twisting somebody's arm, making them do something or buy something that they didn't want, because that's going to come back to hurt you. What you want to do is stop looking at it as you're selling or convincing someone to do something, but call it for what it really is. You're providing a much needed service. And it's even better if you do your marketing and advertising correctly and they contact you. Because let me tell you, that makes a world of difference. Thanks again, ladies and gentlemen, for joining.